Thank you very much. So uh, I actually have managed to uh, come up with 174 slides. Um, no, I'm sorry. It's certainly many fewer slides today. I'm going to take a bit of a, of a different angle, but I'm actually going to focus on a, on a very salient part of what Simon spoke about, which was your data and, and how that applies to, it, it, to the, ch the change from, from regular computing where you, you own all your data on your own machine and it's available to you at any time to where it's available through, through a cloud service. Mm -hmm. But I'm also going to talk a, a little bit about, about openness and why how this all sort of relates together. So there's a number of reasons that we think openness matters. I, come, I started at Google on the open source team. I'm still on the open source team. I moved into open data matters as well. But fundamentally, we believe that open technologies, uh, open data, open web is, is, is a much more useful uh, system for, for consumers. The, the, the canonical example here is we, is the car, okay? Your car is much more valuable to you if you can open up the hood and put more fluid into it, change the oil, that sort of thing. If you were to purchase a car with the hood welded shut, it becomes certainly much less valuable to you. So, the open web should be, for everyone, is, is the, the view that we take. Innovation, idea sharing, uh, opening your technology so that others can use it are, are what is, is changing the web of 10 years ago to, to what the web is today and where it's going in the future. So this is a, a web where everyone can innovate, most importantly without having to ask permission or negotiate deals or contracts or that sort of thing. This, this speeds it up uh, a great deal. Uh, beyond that, the accessibility to the web should be through standards-based clients such as web browsers, uh, open source web browsers, Firefox, uh, Apple's WebKit, Chrome, uh, these are all very important players in this game. Uh, the, the, the fact that we, we have a, an open network where you don't have to negotiate deals or payments to join in, it vastly lowers the barrier of entry uh, for people, webmasters, engineers, developers, companies. And it reduces inefficiency. You see a lot of that sort of transition that Simon was talking about in his slide uh, from uh, innovation and bespoke up to commoditization. Now, uh, we'll set the Wayback Machine to, to the mid-90s when the web was, was very nascent. People were starting to develop applications, services on the web. <clears throat> People spent most of their time writing basic infrastructure and plumbing. Everybody did it. Everybody did the same thing that everyone else did, just in different fashions. Now, the equivalent of that in a very tangible metaphor would be one of construction. Uh, you'll have to forgive my construction metaphors. I'm working on my house right now, back in the States. The, imagine if you wanted to build a house. So, so what you typically would do is, if you're capable of building your own houses, you'll purchase bricks, you'll purchase lumber, nails, and the other bits required and you, you would find someone capable of assembling those into something that vaguely resembles a house. Twelve years ago on the web, the place that we were was basically where you would have to buy cement, sand, um, raw iron, forge into nails, and then start planting trees that you could grow your own lumber for the house. Clearly this is an inefficient way uh, of, of building your own infrastructure. Ninety percent of people's time was spent focusing on focused on building the things that they needed to build, what they wanted to build, and only 10% of their time was actually solving their problem, focused on what they needed to do for their users. Now, the, an, an example of, of, of where we are today that, it, that is sort of allowing this to, to I'm sorry, to sort of change this is, if you wanted to do, say, a map of all the restaurants in, in Brussels, okay, the first thing you need to do is get in your car and get a bunch of paper and go and map the whole city. All right? Then, once you map the whole city, you digitize it, you put it up on a website, and you start adding your, your restaurants to it. Okay? Again, you spend 90% of your time building your basic plumbing and infrastructure. If you were to use uh, an online map system, the example we would have would be Google Maps, and you could take, you, in this case, you could take your list of restaurants, your addresses, inject them into the maps, and since all the mapping infrastructure is done for you, you can focus your time on maybe doing restaurant reviews, finding the best place for wine, the best restaurant for steak, pasta, etc. What, what, what this common infrastructure does 
is it allows people trying to solve a problem to focus more on the problem and focus more on the user experience as opposed to things that really aren't relevant to the product at hand. The oh, two slides. Uh, so again, we don't we don't we think that the web that, that openness is an integral uh, part of the web and continuing innovation of it. We don't think that we could have gotten to to be a successful company without this openness. Larry and Sergey, back in their dorm, they didn't negotiate a deal or a contract to set up a new search engine on the internet. They merely acquired a computer and plugged it in, set up an address, and off they went. Uh, but this open innovation is important. It's important that we continue this so that other startups, other, other innovative companies, other disruptive technologies can come to the fore and provide better services and experience for consumers. So I'll, I'll briefly touch on a, a few ways that we, we sort of contributed back to the open web. Some of these are through services. We've created a, a Google, Google Code, which is a site similar to SourceForge, um, where developers, open source developers in particular, can collaborate and host their software 